You guys, I'm finally here on YouTube. You've been asking me forever when I'm going to get on here and start sharing content. And I've been pushing it off and making all sorts of excuses. I wanted to wait until I got a new microphone. I wanted to wait until I got a fancy camera and fancy lighting and fix up my office. And really, it's just because I am comfortable being behind the scenes and not in front of the camera and not putting myself out there. And for the last 15 years, I've been in the shadow of other people's wings, helping them elevate their personal brands, helping them launch really cool things, helping them make a lot of money. And it's just time to get myself out there and start sharing everything that I have learned in this messy process of pursuing a creative career. So if you guys don't know me, hello, my name is Alyssa Vilas, but my friends call me Liss. And in this video, I want to share my story of how I went living paycheck to paycheck, being what you would call a starving artist to now being a six-figure designer and working with some of the biggest names in marketing. Now, I'm not going to go all the way back, but it should be no surprise that I've always loved the arts growing up and my parents always had me in classes. And in middle school and high school, I was that one weird artsy kid. I went to a private Christian Baptist school so we had to wear these uniforms and I hated it. So I would try to take safety pins and make designs and duct tape and fabrics. And I would try to push the boundaries as much as I could to be different and look different without getting a detention. Uh, when I graduated from high school, I went to University of Central Florida and my dad gave me a camera at that time. And I knew I wanted to do something in the creative field. I just wasn't sure what yet. So I took my first advertising and marketing class because I loved just learning about branding and watching marketing. I sat in that class and they're talking about stuff. And I was like, you know what? I don't want to be the person that comes up with the strategy and the ideas of these campaigns. I want to be the person that creates this stuff and brings this stuff to life. So in order to do that, I needed to get in the graphic design program there. And in order to do the graphic design program, you had to do an art track. So I enrolled in the art classes with the intention to do graphic design. Also at this time in college, I am a barista at a local coffee shop. And because I love doing art, I was still doing art. I was painting on whatever I could. I was painting on guitars. I was painting on shoes, on canvases. I did this like emo robot series for a while, which people really loved. It was just these sappy little heartbroken robots that said these really sad, sappy things to each other. And people love those. And I had a few pieces in art shows, had a few pieces in museums. And this was a just for fun thing for me. I really loved doing it and it was nice just making an extra few bucks on the side. So I was a barista and I was doing that and I was also taking pictures just for fun. I would take photos of my friends and I was part of Campus Crusade for Christ at the time. And I was taking photos of like the events that we were doing there. And one day the leader at that time, his name is Pez, good friend. Uh, hi Pez, if you watch this, you know I love you. And he came up to me, he knew that I was creative and artsy and I wanted to do graphic design. So he came up to me one day and he was like, listen, if I get you Adobe Creative Suites, um, I thought I think it was named something else back then, but we're just going to say Adobe Creative Suites. If I get you Adobe Creative Suites, will you learn how to do graphic design, like teach yourself how to do it and then create graphics for us? And I was like, yes, as a broke college student. Yes, that is a $800 program that I cannot afford. So if you are going to give this to me in exchange for this, 100% I'll do it. So for weeks, I started playing with Adobe Illustrator and Photoshop and InDesign, just trying to get used to it and figuring things out. And this is like right when YouTube came out. So it there were there weren't like tutorials on YouTube to teach you how to do all of this stuff, right? So I'm literally just playing and trying to learn however I can. I know. Oh my goodness. It's so embarrassing even showing this, but this is my very first graphic that I ever did. And it was for a flyer that we were passing out on campus. And back then we thought it was really cool. Looking at it now, I cringe a bit. So I'm teaching myself graphic design. I'm working at a coffee shop. I am selling art on the side and I also have my camera and I'm taking pictures. And every Wednesday night at the coffee shop, we had jazz night. It was my favorite night to work because I love jazz music and it was always packed, which meant I got really good tips. One evening, one of the musicians came up to me and I had taken photos of him previously before. And he was like, Hey, I really love you. I love your work. And I'm getting married here pretty soon. I really need a wedding photographer. Would you be our wedding photographer? I was like, I don't know. I've never done a wedding before. I'm like, what if I mess up? I, I don't know if I want that pressure right now. 
And he was like, no, I really want you to do it. You should be the one to do it. And I want to pay you for it as well. Like, you're not going to talk yourself out of this one. I'm paying you to be my wedding photographer. <laughs> so I was like, okay, I'll do it. So this is my buddy, Jarrett. And here are some of the wedding photos. And we just had such a good time that weekend. And this is such a pivotal moment for me in my creative journey because at this point I was making money from art and I was just doing art for fun and maybe a few commissions here and there. But this was the first time I got paid for a creative service. He saw me. He saw the value that I give. He loved who I was. He loved how I saw the world. And he was like, I want to pay you for that. I want an experience with you. And after that, I realized, well, if he can, like, if he's willing to pay me for this, other people might be willing to pay me as well for this. So that launched the birth of my business, the Lovely List LLC. I still have that today. And I was originally just a photographer. I started shooting weddings and I was doing some headshots here and there, but I was mostly doing weddings and engagements. And I really love that. But Within two years, I was getting really tired. It's a lot of wear on your body doing very long weekends. You're on your feet for 10 hours a day with all this gear. And then the stress of what if your card corrupts? What if your camera breaks? What if you trip and fall while you're taking photos of the bride and groom while they're walking towards you down the aisle, right? All these like what ifs and stressors. So I decided that I needed to pivot a bit. At this point in my life, I'm a barista who is selling art who is teaching themselves how to do graphic design in hopes of getting into the graphic design program at UCF. And I have now made a small business being a photographer shooting weddings for people. Photography, I loved, but I needed to change. And I really enjoyed, I just loved capturing moments. And I just loved capturing people and telling people stories. And so I started to do more brand photography. And I also started to do humanitarian nonprofit photography, which is very near and dear to my heart. And I want to show you some of those photos. This season shifted how I see the world, how I see people and how I see the divine in them. These photos are from Haiti. I went to Haiti twice after the earthquake. First time was with my friends at Dua 58. They have a nonprofit coffee shop in Orlando and they provide meals through another organization called Mission of Hope Haiti. So I went down there with them to see the damage and then what Mission of Hope was doing to rebuild Haiti. Then the second time I went down there was my, with my dad for a medical missions trip and he went out into the mountains to provide aid and healing and I was able to stay back and go into some of the villages villages and check out some of the orphanages and take some photos there. These photos were done with my friends at Limitless Solutions. They 3D print bionic limbs for children. And you might have seen a viral video where Downey Jr. did something with them. For this one, they were at the Clearwater Marine Aquarium. This young lady loved dolphins and loved the movie A Dolphin's Tale. And so they had the actress come on out and surprise her at this event. It was really cool getting to photograph that and be part of that. I also had the opportunity to do some photos for the Paralyzed Veterans of America at their national wheelchair game. So I got to take photos of them while they were in action doing all these sports. But then I also got to do these private, intimate photo sessions with them. And these stories and portraits were shared in ESPN. And I forgot to mention the previous session was featured in some local news outlets, but then I believe it was also Times Magazine. And of course, one of my other favorite things, if you guys couldn't tell by my background, I'm a nerdy girl at heart. And my other favorite things was trooping with our local 501st Legion. They are the ones that dress up in the Star Wars accurate costumes. At Christmas, we would go to the local children's hospital and bring gifts and they would just surprise the kids. And Oh, it was just so cool seeing the kids just light up and just get so excited to see some of their favorite characters come to life. I have hundreds of other photos that I could put in here and show you, but we don't have time for that. So this is just an example of some portraits that I took. I really loved photographing my friends. And I guess this was deemed brand photography. Back then it was just portraits, but nowadays you call it brand photography. I really love this. And who knows, maybe one day I will revisit this because I really loved being a photographer. But... I also still really wanted to do graphic design, right? So as much as I was doing this and making money here, I wanted to do graphic design. And at this point in my life, I'm in the studio all night long working on paintings. And so just to recap, I'm a barista who is selling art, who is teaching themselves how to do graphic design, who also, by the way, needed to learn how to make their own website because now I had a photography small business. <laughs> and I'm also in the studio late at night working on my portfolio in attempts to get into the program at UCF. Unfortunately, I did not make it into the graphic design program. And I was 
absolutely heartbroken and crushed about this because I felt like I wasn't good enough. And I had spent years trying to teach myself design and trying to do all these art classes. And then I felt like I wasted my parents' money because they did Florida prepaid. I'm super grateful for that. I did not have student loans. And I felt bad because I wasted all this time trying to go for a degree that I I'm not even good at. I, there's no way I could do this for the rest of my life. If they don't see potential in me, then who will? And I got a bit depressed about that and didn't know what to do. So at this point, I'm like, well, I'm so far into it. Really, my only other option instead of like starting over in advertising or marketing is I'll do interdisciplinary studies, which is where you take two majors and you have a minor. And because I had technically completed everything I needed for my art major, I can pivot and do something else and then do a minor. So since I was working at the coffee shop and I absolutely loved working at the coffee shop, it is a dream of mine to have my own coffee shop. Um, I was like, well, maybe I can manage that and own it one day. So I'll go into hospitality management because then I can learn all these things. Spoiler alert, the coffee shop thing did not work out as you can see. So my second major was hospitality management. And then my minor was world comparative studies because I really love traveling. And I figured I wanted to learn about all these cultures and religions and history about different things in the world. And so I made up my own degree. I was just trying to figure out, well, what's next? Because now that I've got this interdisciplinary degree, I honestly can't really do much with it. At this time, while I'm just trying to figure out my life, I had heard rumors that a local community college called Valencia had an amazing graphic design program and that they didn't require a portfolio. You could just get in and learn and that they really set up students for success. I enroll in at Valencia. I'll never forget walking into class and sitting down. It was graphic design essentials 101. And my professor walks in and he's like, being a graphic designer is not meant for everybody. So if you want to make as much money as a cashier bag boy at Publix, then this is the field for you. You're really not going to make much. You're going to be spending all your time designing. It is not an easy industry to be in. And so if this doesn't sound appealing to you, then you need to get up and go and look into another career. And a few students actually did get up and leave. <laughs> I, I stuck with it. I did the class. I did more classes, right? I learned about typography and color theory and layout design and composition and packaging. And I had spent two years in this program. And by the end of the two years of the program, my professors were sending me work. The college hired me and everything shifted because they saw the potential that I had. They taught me what to do. They gave me really great feedback. They set me up for success. To graduate from that program, you have to do something called portfolio review, which is where you get the best of the best pieces that you've created over the years or create new ones and you put it in a book. And at this event, they have agencies in the area or, you know, other high level design designers come in and they take a look at your portfolio. And, you know, if, if your portfolio was good enough, you might get an invitation or a job interview from this. So I was super nervous. And here is evidence of how nervous I was. There's like my resume and there I am with an agency that I really loved in Orlando. And he's looking at my portfolio. That night, majority of the people I interviewed with asked me to come in to interview at their agency. So I spent the next few weeks interviewing with the, the agencies, taking on some test projects with them, getting to know them a little bit better. But... I knew that I didn't really want a nine to five. I had also, I forgot to mention this. I was a barista and doing classes and doing all these things. I was also working part-time as a graphic designer at a church and I hated it. Um, and so I knew that I wanted to maybe go the freelancing route. A lot of people weren't talking about it. The college didn't teach us anything about it. But I was like, well, if I'm this good at graphic design, surely I can run my own business and I'll do my own thing. I can do photography. I can do website design. I can do graphic design. I'll just like bundle it together and it's going to be amazing. It was not amazing. Everything was like this and I had to move back in with my family and I got really depressed because I was stuck in this starving artist cycle financially and mentally. Like I'm not good enough. Nobody likes what I'm creating. Nobody sees the value that I'm providing. I'm not getting paid what I'm worth. I 
had photography at least. And now that I'm moving cities, I have to find all new clients. And I eventually found a full-time graphic design position, very entry level. And it was one of those positions where you're so good at your job, you get more added to the plate without your salary changing. It got so stressful and just so toxic that I was having emotional breakdowns all the time. And during this time I got married, my husband is a therapist and he was like, I know we're already struggling, but I cannot see you like this because it is literally killing you. You have to go all in on you and quit your job. And I'm like, oh, you're right. I should go all in on me and quit my job. So I do that. I make the announcement that I'm freelancing again. I'm, I'm now offering graphic design and website design and photography. And I'm like the perfect all in one package. And I didn't really know about business or marketing, anything like that. I did have some other really cool projects and clients. And if you go on my website, you might see some of that, those pieces there. So I have worked on really cool things. I've worked with really cool people in the process. It just wasn't consistent. And I guess I should show you some of my graphic design pieces. Now, some of these are more recent, but in this phase of freelancing, I was doing stuff for local cities. I was doing stuff for really large organizations. I was doing stuff for some agencies. Um, so this is a mix of some recent and then some old work as well, just so you could kind of see my style. So I've got a very modern and minimal style and um, I just absolutely love doing design. I got better at graphic design, guys. Yay! One day I met with my friend Liz Lopez for lunch and she was like, I know what you're missing. What you're missing is a mentor. You need a mentor in your life. And when she said that, all I could hear was ka-ching, ka-ching, because mentors are expensive. And I was already still really struggling. So I didn't know like what I was going to do. I was like, you know what? She's got a point. Maybe I do need somebody in my life to guide me. By now, if you didn't notice, I'm a spiritual girly. I believe creativity and spirituality is intertwined. And I am deconstructing a lot of what I grew up believing and the religion I was taught. And I do still love Jesus. I do still love God. I'm just untangling a lot of the mess of it right now. So I wanted to find a mentor that loved Jesus, but also loved business and entrepreneurship. Because for me growing up, we were always taught to ask the entrepreneurs for money, but like it was really bad to be wealthy and you should be poor because Jesus loved that. That's not true. I found someone who I thought was going to be a good mentor. is $97 a month, so it was affordable. She would give you access to her courses, and then you would hop on a Zoom call with her once a week where she would do hot seats. But you couldn't engage with anybody else in the community. You couldn't network with anyone, which I didn't like because I'm a community person. I want to talk to other people that are also going through the mess of things. So after a few months, I left that, and I am just, like, devastated. I am on the edge of my bed crying being like, God, what is going on? You say that I am this and you say that I am this. And I really want to believe that. And I see that you are blessing all these other people who are like me. And I just don't know, like, why, why is this not happening? And so I am sitting at the edge of my bed. I'm doom scrolling on my phone and I come across this ad. And what I should say before I show you the photo of this ad is that because I was designing websites, I was getting ads from a guy named Russell Brunson who owns ClickFunnels. And part of the, his thing back then was websites are dead. Funnels are the new thing and they convert higher and this is what you should be focusing on. So I had already kind of known about funnels. I had noticed that when you made a million dollars through one of his funnels, you got this really pretty shiny uh, award and it's called two comma club award. And I was like, wow, I love that. I would love one of those. And I still do want one. My funnels have helped other people get two comma club awards. And I'm going to put it right there when I get it, when I get it, hopefully by next year. Now that you know that this is going to make more sense. So I'm doom scrolling, I'm crying and I come across this photo and I see he's got a two comma club award. And I'm like, oh, that's awesome. He's made a million dollars with a funnel. So I know he's legit. And I go back up and I read the copy and the copy is all about the tug of war between faith and entrepreneurship. And I'm reading this and I'm like, oh my gosh, it's as if he's speaking to me. And the invitation was to join a 30 day masterclass where we would read the book of Romans and just talk about Jesus and entrepreneurship. And I was like, this is right out my alley. I'm going to join. But before I join, I should look this guy up. So I Google him and nothing comes up. So I'm like, red flag. <laughs> then I click on the funnel and it's ugly. Red flag. Then I fill out the application of the funnel and it doesn't submit. Red flag. But my gut was telling me that I needed to get in this group somehow. So I actually message him and I'm like, hey, just want to let you know your funnel's broken. I'm trying to get in. I would really love to check this out. He's like, oh, yeah, yeah, no worries. I got you. Let's do this. I'll add you in the group. 
So he adds me in the group and for the next 30 days, I show up every day for an hour at a time and I'm taking notes and I'm absorbing things and I feel like I found my people. So at the end of it, he offers 100X, which is a year long mentorship program. I want to say when he offered it, it was 1500 bucks. And again, I'm a broke creative, <laughs> so I can't swing this. And I go to John and I'm like, I really want to do this. I really like him. I like these people. I really feel like this is something that I could be part of. And I, I, I want to find a way, like, I don't know. I don't want, like we had a lot of credit card debt, so we didn't want to take out another credit card and get further in debt. So my husband was like, well, let's just sell whatever we can in the house. So you get in this. So I sell like my motorcycle at the time. I sell a bunch of things. I pre-sell some photo shoots. I do whatever I can and I make the money to get into this group. And this changed my life forever. So I'm in this community. I'm loving it. And about a month later, Paige was like, we should all get together in California. Let's have this little conference and meet one another. You guys can come to my house and we'll hang out. We'll party. And it's, it's going to be amazing. So I literally fly out to California <laughs> a few months later for this conference. And I'm like, man, am I crazy for doing this? This is a little culty. Like I've never met these people in real life. And now I'm flying out to California to meet them and see who they are. And he literally invited everybody to his house. Like, no lie. Family was there. They're making food, like like home-cooked food. And everyone that I've been talking to online is here in person. And we're just, like, greeting each other and hugging one another. And it was actually a really, really, really cool experience. And we do the conference. And every night, go back. After the conference, we go back to his house. And we're hanging out. And so towards the end of the event, I decided I was going to stay an extra day and go to one of the national parks out, out that way. So I had rented a car and one night we're at his house and I, I had gotten there pretty early. So I parked in the driveway and I ended up getting blocked in and I wanted to leave, but I couldn't leave because everyone else was there. I didn't know whose car was whose. So I was like, well, I'm just going to stay until people start fizzling out and eventually I'll go. So then once people started leaving, I hugged them goodbye and told them, yeah, I got to drive to Sacramento. I think it was like 40 minutes away or an hour away from where they were at. And, and so he's like, no, 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 no. You got to stay here. Well, I can't let you leave at two o'clock in the morning by yourself driving to Sacramento. So please stay here. You can sleep on my couch. So he talks to Suzette and they get a blanket for me and I get to sleep in their super comfy couch in the office downstairs. And while I'm sleeping or at least getting ready to go to sleep, I really feel like the Lord tells me designed for him for free for one year. And do not judge me for what I'm about to say. But I was like, God, that is the stupidest idea I have ever heard in my entire life. Why would I design for a millionaire for free when he can clearly pay my bills? Like, why would I do that? And so I was like, you know what? I'm going to test this and make sure it is God also, but like, let's just see what happens. So I go back home and in the community and he would teach and then he would drop like a word document so i would take that stuff and i would make it look really pretty in like a worksheet and then i would post content like this and this is the very first worksheet that i did and i dropped it in the group i have the brand color i made it look really nice and fancy so this is happening for weeks and i get a phone call from pedro and he's like hey are you redesigning my stuff and putting it in the group and i'm like i promise i'm only putting it in the group i'm not sharing it with everybody else and am i in trouble like I'm really sorry if you don't like this. He's like, no, 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 this is really cool. Like, I really love your work. Um, how would you like to design for me? And I was like, yeah, I, I think that would be great. And so he's like, well, what are your rates? Send me your rates in your portfolio. And I was like, I don't, I don't, I, I don't want to charge you. I, and I was going to be like, God told me to design for you for free for one year. So I told him, you know what? I don't want to bill you. I just want to see how this goes. Let's see how we work together and if this is even like a really good fit. And so at the year mark, I did finally send him my rates. He did pay me and I continued as a contractor for him. But if any of you guys know who this is, he got really big in the marketing world for mostly for challenges. And so because he grew, his influence and impact and everything grew there. I got to design all these really cool things for him. I have designed hundreds of challenge graphics like these for him and his students. And I was also able to do challenge funnels as well. And PS, by the way, these are all done inside of Canva. Not only was I designing, but he was also giving me the opportunity to go in his communities and teach hundreds of students about design, funnels and things like that. So here I am on stage at one of his events, uh, which I was a little mad about because he told me last minute, like literally 
an hour before this that I would be going on stage and talking about Canva, but it went well. And I'm very grateful for this opportunity of going into the communities and teaching because I didn't really know that I loved doing it until I was in it. And it's so fun for me because I remember how hard it was when I was starting my photography business. I needed my own logo. I needed a website and I couldn't afford my dream designer at that time. So I had to figure it out on my own. And I know there's many of you guys out there, maybe some of you who are watching this who are feeling really stuck at the creative part and know what you want to do and you see you kind of see the vision but you're kind of missing that middle piece and you just can't invest in a designer yet it's okay it's possible you can design your own graphics and you can start off with your own vision your own things i really love teaching people how to do that which is why now i'm here on youtube and i'm on tiktok and on facebook sharing some of this content with you Pedro, Suzette, if you guys see this, you guys know I love you. You you guys are like family to me and I'll forever be grateful for this experience. Surprise, it's a few days later. <laughs> I did finish the story and the video from the other day and I was editing it and I was like, I don't really like this to be honest. So here we are a few days later, new fit. It's in the evening, so I don't have that beautiful light in. But I wanna wrap this up before I film my next video, which I think you guys are really gonna enjoy. Last year, I stepped down from my full-time creative director position with Pedro to do my own thing. And when I made the announcement, the response was overwhelmingly positive and I am just so grateful because I was terrified terrified to do this. And I knew, I just felt in my spirit that it was time to do this, but I hadn't been working on like my own personal brand or finding clients or figuring out marketing or figuring out like, what the heck am I going to do? And of course the fear of what if you fail yet again, creeping back there as Keith Lee would say, God is amazing. And I've been fully booked since making that announcement. Pedro is still one of my clients and I have a few other monthly retainer clients and I have, you know, one or two other projects that we squeeze in every month. And so I typically have a month to two month wait list. So if you do want to work with me, message me sooner than later. And if you need something sooner, I, I love sharing the work. <laughs> and so if I can't do it, I will help you find another designer who may be a better fit at the project. I love networking. And so I'm in a lot of different groups. So I'd be more than happy to find you someone. And to end this video, I want to give you three action steps to take to change your creative journey for the better. Number one, don't give up. If I had given up from UCF to Valencia, I wouldn't even be where I'm at today. I Who knows what I would have been doing. Maybe I would have been still working at a coffee shop and I still would have had fun with that. But I'm so grateful that I just kept pushing through and that I didn't give up on the dream of becoming a designer. I had no idea that I would work with some of the biggest <laughs> names in marketing. And I've worked with some other big brands that I didn't even mention in here, and that's okay. Um, so you never know. You just never know what opportunities are going to come your way. So please don't give up. Number two, I'm going to give you the same advice my friend Liz gave me. It's time to find a mentor. And you're probably thinking the same thing I did with ka-ching, ka-ching. There's no way I'm going to be able to swing it. Why would I do that when I have so much free stuff that I can get here on the internet? I get it. It's hard when you are stuck in that starving artist financial cycle and even mindset cycle. But I promise you guys, everything changes when you make an investment in yourself. And if you find someone that you vibe with and you're like, yes, I really want to learn from that person and they have a program available, then do it. Take the next step. It is going to be a game changer for you. And I understand that my situation, yes, is totally different. What happened to me is not going to happen to everybody. But I have seen it in my own friends' lives when they invested in a mentor and how much their lives have changed and their businesses have changed. So I'm going to encourage you guys to do that. And number three is show up and serve. But here's the secret. Are you ready? Here's the secret. Do with no expectation. In the marketing world, a lot of people will tell you to do this, but with the intent to sell that person on the next thing. So they'll tell you to go in groups and answer a lot of questions and get your name out there, which look, it's a great organic marketing strategy. I totally get it. But a lot of times people will use ChatGPT to give responses or it's not authentic at all. And you can tell that it's just a BS response of some sorts. And then you like, don't be surprised when that person ends up in your inbox instead. Personally, in my experience, and what I believe is that when you give with no expectation, that 
God blesses you back. So that's my encouragement to you. Again, thank you so much for watching this video. I would love to hear your takeaways in the comments below. And if you want to learn more about Canva, design, funnels, or websites, make sure you hit that subscribe button and tell your friends as well because this is brand new and I'm a little nervous about it. I don't know what to expect, but I'm pretty stoked to be trying this out and be on this adventure with you guys. Thank you. Peace and love. And I'll see you on the next video.